Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Yao Yao is our new and adorable 4-star character that's also our first Dendro healer. As such, she opens up more variety for possible Dendro team comps, making her a nifty 4-star to have. So to help you maximize what she can bring to your team, this guide will go over her talents and kit, constellations, best artifact and weapon builds, and team comps. Let's get started! Hello! I'm Yao Yao! It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance! Yao Yao's normal attacks are a 4-hit sequence of physical damage. She wields them exactly like a little kid would a pole and the animations are pretty adorable. I am concerned at how she seems like she's on the brink of toppling over its weight. Anyway, her auto attacks are the least relevant to her kit, so let's move on to her dendro abilities. Yao Yao's skill releases Yugui, a little bunny device that lasts on field for 10 seconds while throwing a white jade radish every second. This radish can target your character, co-op allies, or enemies, and explode on contact. A radish will heal if it hits a character and deal damage if it hits an enemy. However, Yugui's targeting will depend on the combat scenario. If an on-field unit has less than 70% HP remaining, Yugui will target them whether an enemy is nearby or not. If an enemy is nearby and the on-field character has more than 70% HP, Yugui will target opponents at random instead. If no enemy is nearby and your HP isn't full, Yugui will target your character. And if no enemy is nearby and your character is at full HP, Yugui will just randomly throw radishes around. In addition, the white jade radishes have certain attributes to take note of too. Their damage is counted as skill damage and scales on Yao Yao's attack, while the healing scales on her max HP. If a radish doesn't initially hit a character or an enemy, it will stay on the ground and explode if it touches a character or enemy, or once its 5 second duration expires. Then, radishes have a small AoE for splash damage. If enemies are clumped together closely enough, they will take damage together. Thankfully, this benefits you too. If the radish hits an enemy that's very close to you, the enemy will take damage while you also receive healing. In the same way, if Yugui hits you with a radish to heal, any opponents that are nearby will also receive damage. But also, an enemy can block a radish that's meant to heal you if they're in the way. Now, let's talk about the internal cooldown or ICD of these radishes, which is how often it can apply dendro to trigger or set up reactions on an enemy. Over its 10 second duration, hitting all radishes applies dendro 4 times on one target, which shows around a 2.5 second interval of application. But also, ICD is counted per enemy or entity, so if Yugui is targeting opponents at random, the total number of dendro apps can vary. This is beneficial in multi-target scenarios since randomizing your hits among different targets can get in more dendro application. To complement those radishes, when one explodes, her A4 passive allows the active character in its AoE to regain a small amount of HP every second for 5 seconds. There's a bit of delay before the effect kicks in, but once it does, you'll see the unit have this shimmer around them. The actual healing from it is quite small, but it adds up nicely to Yugui's main healing source. Then, regarding her energy generation, a dendro particle is only generated if Yugui's radish hits an enemy, but particle generation also has a 2 second cooldown. That can reach up to 5 particles generated over Yao Yao's skill duration. However, no particle is generated if it only hits your character. Next is Yao Yao's burst. Upon casting, Yao Yao enters the Adeptal Legacy state for 5 seconds, giving her additional effects. First off, White Jade Radishes will simultaneously deal damage and heal, even if you're not in its AoE. And that healing now applies to the entire party, not just the active character. The damage dealt is also counted as burst damage, and just like her skill, the damage also scales on attack. Then, she quickly summons three more Yugues, which disappear shortly after her burst state ends. Combining all these Yugues means that your entire party can regain HP very, very quickly. Yao Yao also gains movement speed and dendro resistance bonuses. And with her A1 passive, if Yao Yao is running, sprinting, or jumping during this state, she will throw even more Jade Radishes at nearby opponents. So don't forget to do any of those actions while using her burst. It's an interesting way to play a character, more so a healer, and is one of the few abilities with a movement-based effect. With regards to its dendro application, her burst can apply dendro at most 5 times on a single target. Do note that if Yaya's skill is also active during this time, the two abilities will share ICD. But again, if there are multiple opponents, it will still result in more dendro applications in total. 
Yaoya's burst has a 20 second cooldown and 80 energy cost, and since the particles Yugui generates can usually go to the on-field unit instead of her, Yaoya would want a high energy recharge stat if you're looking to burst every rotation. However, that won't always be necessary. In some scenarios and rotations, it's ideal to just use Yaoya's skill while activating her burst only as needed for emergency healing. For example, in a quicken team where Yaoya's main job is to maintain quicken uptime, her skill is sufficient for that. Of course, there will be scenarios where getting her burst up consistently will be preferred, such as in a Nilu team that wants more Denjo application or against corrosion enemies which want more healing. I'll discuss her ER recommendations in the build section. For Yaya's talent priorities, you can level up her skill and burst equally, but if you don't use her burst as often, then you can prioritize her skill level more. Then just leave her normal attack talent alone. Yaya can already perform her role well at C0, but let's see what her constellations add to her kit. With C1, characters within the AoE of Jade Radish Explosions get a 15% Dendro damage bonus buff for 8 seconds and 15 stamina restored. This can occur every 5 seconds. It's a minor boost that matters more if Dendro characters in your team can utilize it. At the very least, Yaya herself can make use of it. C2 makes it so that when she's in her burst mode, she's able to get 3 energy every 0.8 seconds when her radish explosions hit enemies. I would say this is her best constellation as it helps reduce her ER requirements, allowing you to focus more on other stats. C3 increases her skill talent level by 3. C4 gives her skill and burst an EM buffing utility for Yao Yao. Her EM is increased by 0.3% of her own HP, maxing out at 120 EM, which would take 40,000 HP. So if you build her with high HP for healing, then at least a bit of it helps boost her reaction damage. C5 increases her burst talent level by 3. And finally, at C6, for every two radish throws, the Yugui from her skill creates this mega radish. It has a larger AoE explosion that can deal higher damage and heal more than the regular radish. But only two mega radishes can be created. This basically gives a healing and damage boost, and with a larger AoE explosion, it can be easier to apply Denjo on multiple enemies. Reaching up to C2 is a good early stopping point since C1 gives a Denjo damage bonus that some teammates or Yao Yao can make use of, and C2 helps with lowering her ER requirements. C4 and C6 are mainly damage and healing boosts. Other than that, Yao Yao's constellations thankfully don't feel too necessary and are generally quality of life improvements, making her a pretty good C0 unit already. Moving on to her build, we can categorize some recommendations depending on what role you plan to use her in. For the most part, her general support build is that of a healer, which is very simple to do. But there are other builds that can let her do more damage or offer more support. Let's go through the artifacts first. If you're using her mainly for healing plus dendro application, then the stats are pretty straightforward. The sands can either be HP or ER depending on what you need more. The goblet will be HP% percent for more healing, then the circlet can either be HP% percent or healing bonus, though healing bonus can offer stronger healing. You won't expect this build to contribute much damage, but it'll maximize her healing utility. Then, you can make a hybrid build by giving her pieces with EM main stats. This is feasible in teams where Yao Yao herself is expected to trigger blooms often enough, which will probably be in a Nilu bloom team. But the most obvious concern is that trading EM for HP means that you lose healing potency but gain more reaction damage, so it's up to preference how much healing you're comfortable with losing. There is one more build, which is building Yaya for spread damage. It enables Yaya to do more damage on the side, but don't be surprised if you don't get the same level of damage you would compared to building a unit that's really meant to DPS. Anyway, you simply build Yaya as you normally would any other spread DPS. Obviously, you're sacrificing a lot of healing if you focus on more offensive stats. Going back to this topic, how much energy recharge does Yao Yao need? It depends a lot on how often you plan to burst and what her team comp is. As I discussed in her burst section, there are some teams where she doesn't really need to use her burst every rotation, and some where it's ideal to have it ready on cooldown. You also have to consider other sources of energy, like another Dendro teammate, Favonius users, enemy types, etc. So let's just use simplified ER recommendations. In a team where bursting every rotation isn't as essential, her ER requirement can just be whatever, though the more you have, the more reliable she can be for emergency healing. What if you want to burst every rotation? In teams where she's comped with another Dendro unit, 180% is generally a good initial target, so this can be adjusted as needed. In teams where she's a solo Dendro unit, though, that goes up to 200 plus percent. 
If you have her C2, then this can lower your ER requirements by about 20%. Now what about her sets? There are several viable options for her full sets, but I'll first mention what I think are the top three choices. First up is the four-piece deep wood, her recommended set most of the time. This makes her the dendro resistance shredder for more spread, bloom, hyperbloom, or burgeon damage. The deep wood set is also the best option if you're actually trying to build her for damage and no one else in the team is equipped with it. But if your team doesn't really need the resistance shred, you can consider these next options. Second is the 4-piece Tenacity set. Yao Yao can reliably proc its effect off-field over time with her skill. This gives your team an attack buff and also helps shields last longer. It's a good set if she's just a general healer for a team that's not about dendro damage, so she can buff whoever your DPS is with the Tenacity's effect. Third, the 4-piece Instructor set is another interesting option as it lets you buff your entire team's EM, making it useful for your team's reaction damage. One good example is a Nilu Bloom team where anyone can be a Bloom trigger. However, since the pieces only go up to 4-star quality, Yao Yao will have a lower stat ceiling compared to using 5-star sets. Now, the next options are less recommended and for more niche uses. The 4-piece Gilded Dreams is an option for Bloom or Nilu teams where Yao Yao triggers Bloom damage or if you're building her for spread damage. Another damage-focused build is the 4-piece Emblem set to increase her ER and buff her burst. If your only concern is getting the most heals, the Maiden's Beloved or Ocean-Hued Clam set are your picks, but they can end up being overkill for her healing. Otherwise, you can just combine the following 2-piece sets depending on the stats and role you're aiming for. Next, for Yao Yao's weapons, she has various recommendations depending on what her role is. For her support weapons, your best picks are ER weapons or the Black Tassel. The Favonius Lance will be her general best in slot as it helps with her ER and generates particles for your team. If she's running around with her burst, there's lots of chances to crit and trigger the weapon's effect, so it's easier to get away with the lower crit rate. The Prototype Star Glitter for the ER stat and Kitane Cross Spear for its energy refunding mechanics are craftable weapons if you don't have other ER weapon options. There's also the catch, but other characters want it more. 5-star ER weapons are also there, though they will be generally wasted for a support Yao Yao. And the Black Tassel is a cheap 3-star option and the only pole arm with an HP% percent second stat. If you have enough ER from artifact stats, you can just use this to increase her healing. If you want an EM weapon for a Bloom Trigger build, there are only three options. The two craftables, Kitane Cross Spear and Moon Piercer, and the Gacha 4-star Dragon's Bane. Moon Piercer is the worst option since the attack buff it can give isn't that relevant for a Bloom build. Kitane at least has some energy refunding mechanics, making it better. And Dragon's Bane has the highest EM stat among EM pole arms. Her burst and ER are still important even if Yao Yao's used in Bloom teams, so ER weapons can still be valuable if you don't have enough from her artifact stats. For dendro damage builds, any offensive pull arm that you usually put on DPSs will do. This includes crit, EM, attack, and certain ER pull arms, or generally pull arms that give relevant damage bonuses. Finally, let's look at what teams Yao Yao can be slotted into. As a 4-star dendro unit that can now consolidate, trigger, and quicken, and being the dedicated healer, this introduces more team comping flexibility for your aggravate or spread teams. For example, if you wanted to create an ideal aggravate team, the general template would be two electros to be your aggravate damage dealers, one of them likely being Fischl, one dendro to trigger quicken, and a flex slot, which is often recommended to be animo to shred electro resistance. One concern is how to keep your team alive. There are already options like Cookie, Animo Healers, Zhongli, etc., but there are opportunity costs to using them. If you use Cookie as a second Electro, especially if she's in place of Fischl, you get healing but do less damage. If you put in an Animo Healer like Sayu or Jean, you don't get the damage buffs someone like Sucrose or Kazuha can give. If you put Zhongli as a Shielder and Resistance Shredder instead of Animo, you get really strong defense, though the damage ceiling is still lower compared to a VV-equipped Animo unit. But with Yao Yao, you can slot her in as a quick and trigger while being able to use Sucrose or Kazuha, Fischl, and your preferred on-field Electro DPS. Alternatively, you could also make Yao Yao the second Dendro unit in a spread team, like with Nahida, Tignari, or Alhatham. She basically does the similar function of Dendro Traveler or Kolei in that she's using the 4-piece Deepwood but now has useful added healing utility. In such Quicken teams, you don't need to burst every rotation as her skill alone can sustain the Quicken aura for the most part. That way, she can just save her burst for emergency healing situations. 
For Bloom teams, she's also a welcome addition as a healer for more team comp variety. She particularly frees you from having to use Barbara or Kokomi in a Nilu Bloom team. Plus, thanks to her dendro resistance increased during her burst, she can take a lot of self-damage from Bloom explosions. But if she's the only dendro unit in the team, she'll have a very hard time keeping up dendro application for the entire rotation. And so, whether it's a Bloom team with or without Nilu, you may need a second dendro applicator to ensure consistent Bloom generation. When paired with Candice, it's a particular synergy where Yao Yao can get Hydro Infusion to her polearm attacks. This allows her to trigger cores herself while she's your on-field unit, though you'd preferably have at least a C1 Candice for the infusion to last longer. When it comes to Hyperbloom or Burgeon teams, Yao Yao as a solo dendro applicator can be just about enough to maintain an acceptable rate of core generation. Remember to run and jump around when she's in her burst to throw as many radishes as possible. But if you want more dendro application, you can always comp Yao Yao with another dendro unit to make her a secondary dendro applicator and team healer. Units like Alhazam and Nahida are very good on-field drivers, while Dendro Traveler or Kole provide off-field Dendro application. But at the end of the day, you can simply slot in Yao Yao in any overworld team to have her and Yugui heal you in your day-to-day -day adventures. And that's it for Yao Yao's guide. I think that for a 4-star that can even be free from the Lantern Ride event, she's pretty solid in what she offers as a new Dendro healer. Combining Dendro application and healing in one unit is a very welcome addition to expanding our Dendro roster and teams. And to make the deal sweeter, it's all packaged into the small and adorable Adeptus Disciple with her bunny companion, Yugui. If you were able to try out Yao Yao or get her for your account, let me know in the comments what you think of her. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you all soon. Take care. Huh? Did my spear just get lighter? It'd be great if it could get a little shorter too.